Audio Jungle. All right. Welcome in. Clap. Uh, I spent all afternoon building a Discord channel, so everybody go click in the link in description and join that Discord channel. Uh, there's a ton of stuff in there gambling stuff hanging out if you like to game whatever there's a chat and do whatever join and become more of a part of the community i spent all afternoon building that out so i think there's like every there's like a channel for like every sport nba nfl college football all that and with run, run it up and with the nfl coming back it'll be good no i'm not sitting here trying to sell picks i'm a normal guy it's just a spot for all of us to kind of hang out talk send each other gambling picks whatever we want to do so if you're part of the community don't know me personally join in discord and we can talk in there neither one of us are good enough to sell picks so that is not ever going to happen no all right so today on the agenda i have i have four players that are primed for a breakout i think you might have three yeah, I got three guys. So we have we have some guys that we think that are prime for some breakout seasons. And on top of that, we're going to give our predictions for MVP this season. One sleeper pick, one real pick, and then obviously it probably won't happen, but just for fun, uh, a non-QB position to win MVP. And let's get into it. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Um, let's start with let's start with the three. Well, the breakout guys, and then we can well, go yeah, into MVP. Obviously. I'll, I'll go I'll go first with my with my breakout with one of my breakouts. Um, so first, I've got Buffalo Bills tight end Dalton Kincaid. Okay. Um, Why? Twenty twenty three. I'll I'll get there. Twenty twenty three stats: seventy three receptions, six hundred seventy two yards, two touchdowns, average nine point two yards per catch. Um, there's no real legitimate number one option in Buffalo. Um, and I think that that's going to benefit. Realistically, I think there could be, you could put a couple other guys from that Buffalo um, offense on this list as potential breakout guys. Um, Cause like I said before, there's no real number one guy now that Stefan Diggs left. Um, also Gabe Davis left. So I believe that those two guys, Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs, had a combined like 200 plus receptions. So that just opens the door for those receptions to be dispersed elsewhere. And I think Dalton Kincaid's going to end up taking another step and he's going to be a mismatch for linebackers. And I think he's going to be a big part of this offense moving forward. Um, I know that they still have Dawson Knox, but um, I have some pushback on you. I like I like Dalton Kincaid a lot as a breakout guy. Do you have any response to the beat reporter saying that Dawson Knox is getting all first team reps? Yeah. Fuck him. <clears throat> so you don't think that matters then, essentially? Um uh, I'm not worried about it. Okay. That's fair. Do you so what what does a I guess what else do you have? What does a breakout season look like for him? What what is what do you mean? Like so I mean I saw like, like is I he before, Travis there... Kelsey? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I think I think um I, I don't I don't think it's fair to compare him to Travis Kelsey, but I would put him I think that he moves into probably like the top seven tight ends for Is he like not already? After top year one seven? After year know. one? I don't know if I have him up there. Name seven tight ends better than him right now. Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Dallas Goddard. Dal I right now I'm Dallas Goddard is not not Dalton Kincaid. He's not. He's a he was better than him last, last year. year. No, he wasn't. I think throughout his In career, he's category? always been better. In As what a tight end. Was he better than Dal Dalton Kincaid last season? I'm just asking. Last okay, season. Well, you didn't give me you didn't tell me that I was gonna get absolute well, you all this one, pushback well you were the one that that said he wasn't a top seven tight end and then you broke out dallas goddard like give me at least somebody that's good da dallas goddard hasn't been good in like three seasons that's not correct well when's um, the last time he had a complete year the guy's yeah, hurt dallas all the goddard, time. goddard missed a couple games he missed a couple games last year and the year um, before but i still think dallas goddard is a better overall tight end than dalton Kincaid. Shocker, everybody. The Eagles fan has Dallas Goddard above a, an actual talent. 
but keep going. Okay, so okay. Dallas okay, Goddard, I got who Travis That's Kelsey, Mar Mark Andrews. Okay, you got three. I'm looking through here. You're like LeBron oh, James. Oh, Kittle. You're like LeBron James who's sitting on ESPN scrolling the top. That's exactly line. right, because I, I didn't think that I was going to have to rip out 12, 10 guys that are better than him. Because they're not. You can't. That's that is the, that's the exercise right now. I, I no, actually, uh, Trey McBride's definitely better. I'm at okay. five already. Okay. Um, I think um, Laporta is better than him from the okay. Lions. And honestly, I think I think um, Dalton Schultz from the Texans is better than him. What what world do you live in? The reality. No, I, I this is my point of this exercise of for you to name ten guys is because automatically after well, I also one, said seven. Well, whatever, seven guys. I I automatically think that Kincaid. I'm backing you up. Essentially, right here. I, I mean, I just named seven guys that I think are better than him, and I think he makes it into that list at the end of this season. I think that he's. I think the the group of Laporta, McBride, and Kincaid are already better than like Kittle, Dalton Schultz, and Dallas Goddard. I think last year they proved that they are ascending talents, and they play better football at this point than those guys do right now. I think over the course of their career, obviously those guys are. It's hard to look at that because they've been really good, but I think Dalton Kincaid is a top five tight end, like already. I think Evan Ingram's I, up there too, and I think that like he had one good season, and it, when he's twenty nine, but I think Kincaid is going to automatic. I think he is going to have a massive breakout season, and I think that I think that the number one tight end spot is wide open for the taking. I don't think that uh, Travis Kelsey is the same player anymore. I don't think Mark Andrews is the same guy anymore. And I think that like that Trey McBride, Dalton Kincaid, and um, why am I blanking? Sam Laporta group. I think one of those guys are going to really claim that title this year. So yeah, I agree with you. I think he's going to have a massive breakout year. Great. All what? of that just to agree with me. Well, listen, you're not come correct. <laughs> go That's ahead, all I gotta go say. ahead. All right. Who do you got? My first breakout, this is not in any way, shape, or form biased at all. My first breakout is Christian Kirk. The 2022 season, he, he played 17 games, had 133 targets, 84 receptions, 1,108 yards, and eight touchdowns. In the 2023 season, he missed eight games. Listen to some of these stat lines that he put up last year. Six for 104, six for 60 and a touchdown, six for 80, six for 84, 11 for 110 against the Chiefs, 4 for 54 and a touchdown, 3 for 50 and a touchdown. This guy's absolutely primed for a breakout season. I think even when you watch the Jaguars in the beginning of the season last year, they were awkward on offense because you added Calvin Ridley into the mix. You were trying to get him involved. And then as the season progressed, you just started to see Trevor Lawrence automatically start going to Christian Kirk, who seems to be like it's between him and Evan Ingram, who his security blanket is. But I absolutely love Christian Kirk getting healthy going into this season. And I think that there's like a very real opportunity for him to have like a 90 catch season and 10 touchdowns. He is their go-to guy in the red zone. He has some of the surest hands in the NFL. So I like him to take a step up and kind of emulate that 2022 season, but take a step forward because right now, obviously Calvin Ridley left. I'm not expecting Brian Thomas Jr. to make an immediate impact. And Gabe Davis is so boom and bust, boom or bust. I think Christian Kirk is going to be a very consistent target in this offense all season long if he can stay healthy. And if um, Trevor Lawrence can stay healthy too. I think that that's even more of a question mark than, than Christian Kirk. I feel like Christian Kirk's injury was like, Honestly, kind of like fluky. It yeah. felt like really weird watching that when that happened. Um, but yeah, but I'm in all these assuming games, he's okay now. And even before that, he was real. Even before he got injured, like you mentioned, you just rattled off all those games. Like he was putting up really good numbers. He was starting to eat, and that's that's so, what I was trying to get at. Is the beginning of the season? It was awkward. T. Law was hurt during all of these games that I just listed when he had his ankle injury, et cetera. And it, you could tell that like the focus was let's get the ball to see Kirk because he's our reliable target out of the slot that we know that we can get the ball to him. So yeah, I think that it's realistic. Like I said, 2022 is first 
or 2022 his first season playing in in Jacksonville, he had a big season and I think that if it wasn't for him missing 8 games last year, I think that I think he's close to honestly those same numbers that he had in 2022. He was on track for it. So I don't see why he doesn't take a step up again in his third season with Trevor Lawrence. So and, and it's between him and Evan Ingram who are going to lead this team in targets in receptions is the yeah. way I look at it. So yeah. yeah, Christian Kirk, number one guy. Okay. Um, I didn't do this in like my, uh, when I said Kincaid, I don't think he's like my number one guy. I just wanted to say him first. Um, my actual number one guy is Garrett Wilson. I think that that's honestly like the easiest pick because we've seen Garrett Wilson already be good in the NFL, be very good. I know you're already super high on him. Um, but when I say have a breakout year, I mean, like he's going to, if Aaron Rodgers is healthy for this full season, I think we're going to get a really special year out of Garrett Wilson. Um, last year he had 95 receptions for 1,042 yards, only three touchdowns. A guy yeah. as good as Garrett Wilson should have triple the amount at, at least uh, of those amount of touchdowns. Um, average 11 yards per catch. I mean, he did all of that and, the list of his 2023 quarterbacks is just god awful. Tim Boyle, Aaron Rodgers for 30 seconds, Brett Ripon, Trevor Simeon, Chris Strebler. So Strav. I think if you I think if you get Aaron Rodgers in there for a full season, we're I, I'm I think that it's not realistic for this guy to have like 125 catches, 130 catches for like fifteen hundred yards. And Probably like nine touchdowns, especially because what are the odds that Mike Williams stays healthy for a full year? The only other guy is is Brees Hall on that on that offense. Zach Kuntz um, too. Zach Kuntz, very true. Um, yeah, I, I'm yeah, right. I think I'm Garrett right Wilson's going to get so many targets. We've already seen him put up really good numbers with bad quarterbacks. So, um, I, I love I love Garrett Wilson for this upcoming season. I'm right with you. I was looking on, I'm obviously researching fantasy because I'm a man and I'm going to go back to back, but I was looking at Garrett Wilson's projections and I even feel like their projections on him are off. Like, it's just like, it's too low. Like this guy has an opportunity to have a legitimate special season. Don't want to obviously go too far ahead, but when we do our futures episode, like he is definitely a guy who I'm going to be betting to win like offensive player of the year. I think Correct. that he legitimately has an opportunity to have that special of a season. And with, with guys like CMC and stuff getting hurt already, I, I don't know. Garrett Wilson's literally made of iron and getting Aaron Rodgers back. Knock I on wood. Knock on I'm wood. right with, I'm right with you. I think he's going to absolutely snap. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm expecting a big year from him. I think he likes, I think you were already on him being a top 10 guy. I think he's going to solidify himself as a top 10 receiver after this season i think and, and this is obviously whatever we did this a while ago in the offseason garrett wilson's undoubtedly a top 10 wide receiver he's that good and it's just about people waking up and noticing like pretty much so yeah i i think that he is legitimately one of the best wide receivers in the nfl all right who do you got for number two people are so quick to forget the number one overall pick, Kyler Murray. Okay. 2020, they went eight and eight, 16 games, 68% completion percentage, 3,971 yards, 26 touchdowns, 10 picks, 133 carries, 819 yards, 11 touchdowns. That's an MVP season. 2021, 11 and six, 14 games, did this in 14 games. 69% completion percentage, 3,787 yards, 24 touchdowns, 88 carries, 423 yards, five touchdowns. I mean, he was slinging it. Last season, off the ACL, he went 3-5, and five, wins over the Eagles, Falcons, Steelers, 66% completion percentage, 1,800 yards, 10 touchdowns, 44 carries, 243 yards, and three touchdowns. I look over time at those two seasons in 2020 and 2021 who who were kyler murray's weapons larry fitzgerald was 39 years old you you got d hop in there who at the time was one of the best wide receivers in the nfl but that's all they had 
you brought in a, a washed up AJ Green, like you had a washed up Zach Ertz. Like I have never seen Kyler Murray with like an actual good cast of wide receivers. Or was Chase backs. Edmonds in their running back? Yes, running back room in that one of those years. Yes, he was a starting running back for the, the PA for the, alum, the yeah, Central for, PA alum for the Cardinals. And, and obviously, love the guy; he's been good, but he's not even a starter. Um, so I just would I think that like this K one, what we have seen over the years, love him or hate him, do whatever you want. He absolutely raises the floor on all of the offensive talent, just how good he is at slinging the ball and being an absolute weapon on his feet. Now, so where do you see Kyler Murray in the grand scheme of NFL quarterbacks at the end of this season? Because I think he's going to be a phenomenal fantasy quarterback, but fantasy and real life are different. We've seen Kyler play at a top 10 level at a, as a quarterback. We have. I know people don't want to sit here and admit that because they don't like him. Oh, he likes to play COD. Like, blah, blah. Those jokes are, are dumb and out the window. We have legitimately that season. Those two seasons that I just read off to you right there. Those, those are Lamar Jackson seasons. Like yeah. this guy's special. So I think that like we've seen Kyler play at a top 10 level. And I think that you have, you added Marvin Harrison jr. Who's going to be a, a, amazing you have the Dorcher chamber michael wilson's breaking out this this offseason in camp you have trey mcbride who i think is going to be one of the best tight ends in all of football you add trey benson who's a good good running back and you have james connor still this is the first time that you're actually going to see kyler with competent weapons across the board and i'm really excited to watch this happen i think we watched him flash at the end of the season last year, coming off of an ACL injury, you usually see guys come back a little slow. He had a rushing touchdown in his first game back from, from injury. I think he looks really good. Um, I just think that there was a time when the Steve Kime and the Cliff Kingsbury era, it, it was not going to work. It's all over now. There's a new era in, in Arizona with a G, with Monty as their GM with a new head coach, new OC. And I just think that this team is in a completely different place. I think Kyler is in a completely different place mentally. He's a leader. That's all you hear about with the beat reporters, et cetera. I'm, I'm very excited for Kyler Murray this season. I think he's going to absolutely ball out. All right. So far you're, you've gone two Homer picks on us to uh, two of your favorite guys. Hey, that's they don't okay. get they don't they, get enough they, respect. They, fit the they, fit they the, don't get they enough fit respect. The they fit the criteria here for what we're trying to do. All right, my last one is from the deep dark depths. Running back Cincinnati Bengals Chase Brown is my Ooh. third breakout candidate. This one was interesting because, like, do I think that he's going to jump into like the top ten of NFL running backs? Probably not. But I think by the end of this season people will have a very good feeling, a very good idea for who Chase Brown is. Um, he really didn't start to get any re like any burn until like halfway through the season last year. Um, and I think based off of like the seasons that we've seen with Joe Mixon in the Bengals offense, Joe Mixon always ends up being like a top eight guy in fantasy. They, for they always somehow found ways to get that guy touches. He was all he always got the ball in his hand. Um, and I think that having Zach Moss in the backfield as well, like he's not, I'm not really sold on Zach Moss as a running back, like as a guy that's like going to solidify himself as a number one guy. So I think it's a really open competition over there in Cincinnati. And I think that there were some good flashes that Chase Brown showed at the end of last season. So really bad stats that I'm about to name off to you here, but this is what worth like, this is one, two, three, four, five, like six games worth. So let's hear it. 44 rushes, 179 yards and no touchdowns. Not great. 4.1 yards per rush. Um, but like I said, really didn't get to play until the second half of the season. Um, sharing a backfield with Zach Moss, not a solidified number one running back. And from what I've been seeing, he's been taking a lot of number one reps in camp. So correct. Breakout That's guy. As far as welcome to the scene of running backs in the NFL, not necessarily hopping into the top 10. 
Yeah, and I think that that fits the mold, and he is he is getting all the first team reps. So I'm right there with you. All right. So I have somebody on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, Devin I was trying to find somebody and who somebody that I was thinking about that would fit that, and I had a hard time with with. Well, you don't. You're not locked in. You're not locked in. That's why. I have you picked two homers. That's so easy. I picked Devin Witherspoon corner for the Seattle Se- Seattle Seahawks in 13 games last season. 56 solo tackles, 23 assisted tackles, eight tackles for loss, four QB hits, three sacks, 16 pass deflections, one forced fumble, one interception, and a 97 yard interception return for a touchdown. He is an absolute dog. And I think the reasoning why I'm saying that he's going to have a breakout season is you add Mike McDonald to this Seattle defense, which you have like seen that. now all off season. Now that they've been doing joint practices, preseason games, this defense in Seattle is going to be an absolute issue. You saw what, he, what Mike McDonald did for Kyle Hamilton's career last year, where he took a massive step forward and I'm looking at Witherspoon to break out and solidify himself as one of the best corners in the NFL and voted by all of the owners or the GMs in the NFL. He is already a top 10 guy in their opinion, but he is just a defensive tool, tough as nails. He can guard your best receiver and also fly around and be physical. And he is going to be the perfect guy for a Mike McDonald defense. He's going to use him all over the field and he is going to have an absolutely special season. So Devin Witherspoon, if you didn't know about him after last season in 13 games, he made an absolute impact in every single game that he was in. So I'm excited to see him play out a full season with a better defensive coordinator who's going to use him correctly. And I can see him being an absolute animal. Yeah, he was, he was pretty freaking good last year. So taking that next step pretty much just puts him in that. I mean, you already said it. People think he's in the top 10. I mean, he could step right into the, top five top seven guy yeah he's if he's, he's not in the top seven already something that i just love about his game is he's so physical like four quarterback hits three sacks force fumble eight tackles for a loss like this guy is playing at like the slot nickel wherever they bounce them all around but like he is just always getting his nose into shit and he's an animal if you watched him when he was playing in illinois like that's that's the same energy that he brought when he guy. Played in college so yep. yeah I, lo- I love him yeah he he was a guy that i really liked coming out as well so all right on to mvps actually just to sum it up i had garrett wilson dalton kincaid chase brown steve with christian kirk kyler murray devin witherspoon let us know who you guys think is going to have a breakout season this year. I do have one more if you really want me. To oh, yes. It. Yes, you're right. You said you had four. Hit me. Hit me with the fourth. All right. So the last one that I have is Tony Pollard, which it okay. seems like as of right now, everybody's like really down on uh, Tajay Spears is getting drafted over him in fantasy drafts, which I think is absurd. Um, the Titans went out and paid him three years, $21.7 million. If everybody can remember in the divisional round against the against the Packers or against San Fran, he snapped his leg. Like he broke his leg and then went into the season and played. He's he wasn't even a full year. Two, two years ago, you're well, saying coming well, like, into 2023, he was playing coming, off coming of in the last leg. season, he wasn't yeah. off the, the leg yet. So I just think that that's something that kind of got brushed over. Obviously, it was a first round pick, but in the fantasy last year, and he didn't perform up to expectation. But I think that that needs to be taken into account. Like he was playing on a, he came off of a broken fucking leg. So next, 2022 season, 232 touches, 1,400 all purpose yards, 12 touchdowns. 2023 season, 307 touches, 1,350 all purpose yards, and six touchdowns. Obviously, his touches raised. His yards went down and his touchdowns went down. I just think that if we're, if this guy can get into the end zone a a few more times last season, we're talking about this guy still being a number one first round pick in fantasy. Like, no doubt. I just think he had some unlucky, uh, some unlucky or bad touchdown regression that was unlucky. And I think that like this is easily something that can be turned around. And 
I, I don't know. I like Tony Pollard. A quote from the head coach, he said, I'm excited what he can bring to the passing game. He was pretty much talking about him utilizing him as a wide receiver. I don't know. I, I just feel like I love Tony Pollard. I think probably at the beginning of the season, he might split a little bit of time with, with Tajay Spears, but ultimately, I don't know. I think that there's a real opportunity that after the first few games that Tony Pollard will really solidify himself as the number one in this in this offense. I was one of those guys that drafted Tony Pollard and was very disappointed with him last season. Um, but that's a risk that I was willing to take. Um, I I think this is a great pick. Um, I think... I, I was seeing the same things that you saw as far as Tajay Spears getting picked before him. Um, I think Tony Pollard's just an overall better back too. And I think, like you said, he'll end he up is. taking over the number one role. But I don't think it's a bad thing for somebody to have that counterpart second running back option. It makes things so much easier for you, even as a number one guy, that you don't have to go out there and play every single snap as uh, at running back. Like you get, you get to take a break and you're fresher for longer in games. And Tony Pollard's a guy that you want to be fresher longer in games because he's better. So I, I think that he's probably due for a big season too. I, I, I think last year was a, was kind of fluky. Like you said, coming off a leg and also like the Cowboys didn't really have another guy in the backfield that, they could kind of rely on to kind of take some of the pressure off of him. So he didn't have to jump right into it after coming off of a broken leg. And I think that having that other guy like Tajay Spears is going to help Tony Pollard next year. Also, let's just like, let's just look at this. Like they paid him. Like what yeah. else is there to talk about? Like they, they gave him somebody would have Tony Pollard is a very good NFL running. Back. The Titans gave him a legitimate contract. You have Tajay Spears is a fifth round pick. Like yeah. this is a legitimate guy who they want to come in and be their running back. Like if they yeah. wanted Tajay Spears to be the running back, they wouldn't have signed Tony Pollard plain and simple. So I think that that really says everything that we need to. So those are all of uh, our, our breakout players for this upcoming season. Very nice. On to MVPs. Yeah, let's do MVPs. Um, do you want to start? start? I think we start with the non QBs. Okay. I only had one. I had one actual, my actual pick. I have a non QB and I have a sleeper. That's what I have. Okay. So to start us off, non QB, it's very easy to pick Tyreek Hill, to pick Christian McCaffrey. I think if you are going to be a non QB, and this isn't saying something ridiculous, you have to have a spectacular year. So. I'm hoping that they get the deal done, but I've got CD Lamb as my non QB to win the MV to win the MVP. Okay. Last year, 135 receptions, 1,749 yards, 12 touchdowns. Still in a light receiving room, but he had his best season last year, and I look for him to build off of that, um, especially if he gets once he gets paid. If CD Lamb doesn't get paid, he's still going to play this season, regardless of what anybody I, said. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Bo that's a boring pick out of you. I I really that's struggled with this pick. one. I didn't want to. I wanted to like actually make it somebody that I think is realistic outside yeah. of McCaffrey and, and Terry kill. Like you could also say Justin Jefferson, but I don't feel great about Sam Darnold. Being be and like, I don't want to say Saquon Barkley. Like it would have to be a running back or like one of those top, top guys that just goes absolutely nuts. And not I already so picked fast. Garrett. And I already picked Garrett Wilson to be Not like so a breakout fast. guy. So Not I can't so pick fast. him twice. I have somebody. I was thinking, I was like, what what could how could this possibly work? I was thinking I, I have a defensive guy that I think about too. I was that's what I was that's what I was thinking about. How could this possibly work? I look at the Browns. Last year, yeah. their defense obviously was the reason why they were winning games. I think to this being the same reason now. Can the Browns defense overwhelmingly be the reason why they're successful this upcoming season. I think that it, I think they could potentially replicate what they did last year. Yeah. Um, and with that being said, there is one answer. He's an absolute game breaker. And his name is miles Garrett. Yeah. So my question would then be, what is, 
what would have to happen for him to win the MVP? I the sack record is 22 and a half sacks. I'm low key convinced that he doesn't have to break the sack record to actually be considered seriously considered in the MVP talks. The most that he's ever had in the season is 16. He is just such a game breaker. I remember there was a, a game last season where he blocked a field, a uh, blocked a field goal, had a sack, like was just absolutely yeah. wreaking havoc the entire game. I think that if he could put together a full season like this and the Browns can come around and, and their defense be the reason why they're winning games. It's a long shot, $25 to win 5,000. But <laughs> Miles Garrett is my non QB pick to win MVP this season. And I think that the way that I set it up makes it at least believable. So he would last year, he had 42 total tackles, 33 solo, 14 sacks. He actually didn't have any interceptions last year. Well, yeah, he's a D lineman. Yeah, but he would have to have. I figured, honestly, I figured he would have just like one snag, like something. Um, I think he probably has to score like. I think he probably has to sit somewhere around. What did you say the sack record was? 22? 22 and a half. I think he would have to be pushing. I think he would have to sit at like 20. And I think he would yeah. maybe have to have like two touchdowns why (laughs) because you have to because because to win defense to win mvp as a non-quarterback you have to do something fucking crazy and that's what listen okay so if they go and win the north let's just say let's say the browns go 12 and 5 their defense is the overwhelming reason why they're winning football games and miles Garrett has 21 sacks what is That's what does his interceptions and and fumble recovery look like? It doesn't matter. I think I think you just throw one and his one in there with one touchdown. His fumble recoveries, forced fumbles and fumble recoveries. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. It, I'm not I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about the sacks. It could, that could be. I mean, if he has 21, one, probably or it could be three. Like it doesn't matter. I think it. I mean, I think if he has twenty and then he has like two picks and like three fumble recoveries, I think that's and the Browns are the overwhelming best defense in the NFL. Carry them throughout the season, and he's he's the captain of that. I think that's a legitimate case to that's the only go way. up against the quarterback. Yeah, that's the only way because it would have to be like you said. They would have to have like the best record in the NFL. That's the only way. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm going to go next. My sleeper pick. I said it already in the breakout players. Sleeper pick for MVP. Kyler Murray, K1. He has a better offense. Um, $25 wins you $1,250. Reasoning for this. They have better offense. The Rams lost Aaron Donald. The 49ers situation is low-key crazy if nobody's paying attention. You obviously have the Brandon Ayuk situation. You have the Trent Williams situation. CMC's already hurt, and they've had 22 injuries already so far this preseason that they had to actually cancel joint practice with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, this team is – the. I'm saying that because it feels like there's some teams in this in this division that are screaming, maybe taking a step back, and if K1 can be competent and – play how i think he's gonna play i absolutely love him to be a sleeper this year for mvp i like that one my sleeper old man aaron Rodgers. yeah that's not bad i like that uh, I think, nobody's I think talking fair. about this guy to be an mvp um i still think he can go out there and play his ass off i think i mean I think that Achilles was that was so that was obviously such a weird weird thing and he's been healthy pretty much his entire career um but I think what would ultimately he has to, they also have the, the Jets also have the fourth easiest schedule in the NFL um according to sharp football analysis so I think that plays into his favor um I think he's out there too to just prove hey I might be I might be one of the older guys, but I can still go out here and sling it. And that's kind of like why I had the Garrett Wilson as like a breakout guy as well. 
I think Aaron Rodgers is gonna is gonna really go out there and have a have a spectacular year, um, which is so, ultimately gonna lead into Garrett Wilson having a spectacular year. But I think that in order for him to win this, the Jets have to be one of the best teams in the NFL, which I think you and I were already both pretty high on them. Um, already said they have the fourth easiest schedule, so uh, I think a lot of things are lining up in his favor to win an MVP. He's already won two. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like him as a sleeper. I think he's won three MVPs. Three? Yeah, I think so. Um, my pushback on that. Is their defense too good to have a quarterback win MVP? Very valid, but this is also why he's a sleeper. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. I think that there could be a real possibility that the yeah, he, they don't need to lean on him good. to be the best yeah. player necessarily. I, and I, I think, that's fair. I think that's at very this fair. point where he's forty, whatever, I think that that could be a a possibility. Be like, save it for he might be a save it for the playoffs kind of kind of guy. Which I don't know. I like that pick though. I'm not I'm just saying. I was just playing devil's advocate. I understand. Right. Who do you have for your real MVP pick? I got my real MVP as Josh Allen finally getting over the hump and winning one. Last year, 65, 66.5 completion percentage, 29 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. Um Bills were eleven and six. He was the only other guy to receive any first place votes besides Lamar. Um, he had more completions, more passing yards, more passing touchdowns, more rushing touchdowns. Um, and I think without Stefan Diggs in this offense, he'll feel less pressure, less pressure to force it to just one guy and will be able to go out there and and free flow and throw it all over the field. So right. Josh Allen is my in my is my MVP. I think that and again, I think you have to be you probably have to be one of the best teams in the NFL. So ultimately that would mean that they probably end up winning winning their division and they get a top three seed. That's Which a big, is that's a big feat. Tough. That is. Okay. It so, is a big feat. A big foot. So my 2024 MVP pick, this this is absolutely mispriced. If you look at the sports book right now, this player is 1 million percent mispriced. You have Patrick Mahomes at plus 500 being the favorite. I I don't love their offense. Like I don't think that they did anything for me to be like, "Yep, oh, Mahomes is definitely the favorite to win MVP." Um Josh Allen is plus 800. They're in a rebuild. You mentioned that. CJ Stroud plus 1000. Joey B plus 1000. Guy can't stay healthy. Jordan Love plus 1400. Love him. And then Lamar did you already put Jack a bet on him to win MVP. Lamar Jackson at plus 1500. This guy is an absolute back back. Walk. He's an absolute walking MVP in a season where he has played healthy. He is two for three winning MVPs. So yeah, if he play, that's, I mean, that's, hey, I'll take those odds every day of the week. So if pretty much if he plays a full game, a full year, there's a really good shot that he wins the MVP. Um, I think that that is absolutely mispriced. I just read off guys who are in front of him i think that i probably feel best about lamar um he can he still has the running ability he still has all of his weapons like nothing has really changed so i just i like that pick just just based off of it being completely mispriced he should honestly be the favorite i mean i don't really have any i i'm not opposed to him being the favorite i think there's i think that they're building in the fact that back-to-back mvp is really difficult also, everybody just loves Mahomes, which I get it. He's the best quarterback in the NFL. So, like, the default pick is going to be to pick the best quarterback in the NFL. Um, but that's not what we're here to do. Um, I think with the Ravens, we haven't done their preview yet, but I think they have a couple issues on offense. But one of them being that offensive line, uh, I believe they lost a couple guys, a couple starters on there. But again, Lamar Jackson has found ways to do it with with less than what he has right now. And they obviously got Derrick Henry and he's won MVPs already. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think that's a terrible pick. I don't think he should be the favorite, but I think that should be the favorite. Extremely great. Uh, I just I read you. I, don't know. I just read you the list. Mahomes plus five. Could you say it again? 
Mahomes plus 500, Allen plus 800, CJ Stroud plus 1,000, Joey B plus 1,000, Love plus 1,400, Lamar plus 1,500. Why would you not take the guy who has won two MVPs as the favorite? Like, I, I just don't really like. I think, I think it's because I just said, like, look, I think Patrick Mahomes is the best. So, like, that's what people are going to default to. Why isn't he number one? Patrick Mahomes, or oh, I guess I guess that's a good point. I, I I thought you said Josh Allen for some reason. No, no, the consensus is Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback at the NFL. So he's well, yeah, the I favorite that for MVP. Part. That's it. Just seems it just seems mispriced to me. That's all. Even, I think he should be higher than some of those other guys for sure. Yeah, I think like like I think it should be like Mahomes. If you want to use the Mahomes thing, I think it should be like Mahomes, Lamar, Josh Allen. Probably. Like, and, and like the fact that Jordan Love and Joey B and CJ Stroud are in front of him are, are honestly insane to me. I really do think that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, Lamar knows what it takes to win an MVP. He's done it two times already. And he's coming into this with, I mean, one guy, one addition to their offense, basically. So. And now, and I, I think Derrick Henry is going to be a big part of that, but it's, it's not like he has their receiving core is still just Zay Flowers. So he's going to have to put on a show every week, which odds are probably high he does that. So I totally get it. Him. All right. I'm in agreement with you at being higher than what he is. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our 2024 breakout candidates and some some MVP picks, some deep sleepers, non-quarterbacks, and our official pick that are, is going to be on paper now going into the 2024 season. Noah has Josh Allen. I have Lamar Jackson going back-to-back. So let's do it. I'll post this tonight. Let us know uh, who you guys have for your non-QB, your sleeper, and your uh, actual MVP pick. Yeah, let us know if we're tripping. Also, join the Discord, please. Spent so much Discord. Is there is the Discord the link in where? Where can they find the link? Link below.